I'm an answer, praise God. Because if I send any star from the beginning before me, take it today, I don't know if we'll be able to conclude. Praise God. So because of time, let's make use, good use of it. So we'll be able to ask questions before we wrap up today's class. Amen. Amen. And today, I said, if you want to be a successful evangelist, you must dress appropriate. Praise God. Our, our talk, the highlight today is dressing. Praise God. Amen. Dress the way you want to be addressed. Praise God. If you want to be a successful evangelist, you must dress in a way that people will address you. Let your dressing portray Christ. Let your dressing proclaim Christ. Because it suggests the kind of person we are. I would like somebody to open for me the book of Matthew 7, verse 20. Matthew chapter 7. I will need somebody to read from the congregation. Because this is a Sunday school class. We are meant to discuss together. Study together. And Matthew chapter 7. Verse 20. Amen. Praise God. Do we understand that place? The Bible said, by your fruit, we shall know you. What is that fruit that the Bible is talking about? Your heart feet. Your heart feet. Let your dressing preach Christ. Let Christ be seen in what you are putting on. You cannot say you are going asking for evangelism. What should I put it on? Even the man, man on the streets cannot even put it on. Praise God. The Bible says you should dress the way we want people to address us. If you want people to even give you a listening ear, it's time for what you are putting on. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want people to respond to you, it's time for what you are putting on. I am not saying if you are going for an evangelism, you must put on suits. I'm not saying if you are going for an evangelism, you must wear a banner, but let your dress proclaim Christ. Praise God and Jesus. And the second one said, it must be moderate. If you are going out for an evangelism, let your dress be moderate. Believe it or leave it. It is the way what you put on to your to somebody's house will make the person respect or disrespect you. Not to even talk about what you say, you have decided to win souls for God. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Let somebody open the book of Philippians 4, verse 5. And another person, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. Let our dressing be moderate. Philippians 4, verse 5. I also want the one to Amen. Another person read for us. Philippians 4, 5. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what the Bible is telling us? He said, let our outfit be moderate. It doesn't matter how expensive your clothes are. It doesn't matter how expensive your jewelry might be. It doesn't matter how expensive your shoe might be. But let it purchase Christ. That is what is important. In evangelism, what you are wearing is very important. Because your, your dressing attracts gossip. Let me put it that way. I must use that, that harsh word. Gossip. What if you, your dressing, you are telling somebody you just love the person, and you take the person, you look at what you wear. 
Look at what it's saying. Praise God. They are not listening to you. They are looking at your outfits. They are looking at you. That is what I always say. Christianity is not what they are shouting or screaming it. It's your attitude. Your inner heart and your, your physical being. Praise God. The people you want to speak the word of God to, your dressing must convince them that this person is decent. This person is born again. This person is Christ-like. Praise God. Let our dressing be moderate. How can you say you want to go for evangelism? You look like a market seller. A one side a woman or a, a, a madman on the street and you want to go and tell somebody Jesus loves you. If Jesus loves you, do that same Jesus did not love you. Why can't you start with yourself by loving yourself? Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. Let our dress be moderate. It doesn't matter what we are putting, putting on. But let what we are wearing proclaim Christ. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Let Christ be seen. Around us. And the third one said, the way we dress must glorify God. The way we dress must glorify God. We must not just dress because we, we find out that ah, we are so sexy, we have a sexy leg, we have a sexy body, then let's just put on whatever. You can put on whatever when you are going to club. But when you are going to do the will of God, when you are going for a mission of the kingdom, you are going for the business of your heavenly maker, then let your dress and give glory to that name you are going at with. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Let your dress and give glory to the name you are representing. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open the Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Colossians 3, verse 23 said, And whatsoever ye do, do it heavily as to the Lord. And not unto men. Whatsoever ye do, do it for the glory of God, not for men's sake. <laughs> Praise God. You are not going for you are not going from house to house to convince them. You are going from house to house to tell them the, the name of the maker. You are going there to make them know that Christ's salvation is at hand. Salvation is now. Christ is knocking at the door of every act. But we are not going there to go and convince them to see how beautiful you might look. Praise God, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said, whatsoever we are doing, whatsoever we are putting on, whatsoever we are wearing, let those things give glory to God, not men. Let those things preach God, not your endowment. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. It's good, it's good to look good, but let that looking good be of Christ. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Let that so looking good purchase the work of God in you. See the Christ, living, the living Christ in you. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last one said, it must not be corruptible. The way you dress, it must suggest the, it suggests the kind of person you are. It must be moderate, and the way you dress must glorify God. Lastly, it must not be corrupt. Your dressing must not be corrupt. I know many people say, eh, hey, is my body. Yes. But don't forget, your body is the temple of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's common when you tell somebody, ah, sister or brother, this thing you are wearing, ah, 
It's not good news. It doesn't look good for you. you. Say, ah, uh-uh. ah. Is it your body? It's my body. Praise God. Of course, it's your body. But that body is the temple of God. It's not just yours alone. You are the carrier of the body. But someone is dwelling inside that body. Let the world see that person through your behavior. Let the world see that person through your dressing. Because decency is of the Lord. First Peter to me. To me to fall. Say, who is adoring? Who is adoring? Let it not be that. At what adoring of planting the hair, planting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on all apparel, appearance, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corrupt, corruptible, even the element, element of a man, meek and quest spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say so whatever you are wearing, whatever you are putting on, let it not be corruptible. Don't wear it just because you feel it's your body. This body is not ours. It's the temple of our maker. Whatever we put on, whatever we wear, let it always show the glory of God in your life. Let me always bring us the grace of God in you. Let me always show the world that of a truth. You are a child of God. The way you dress or the way you talk or the way you behave differentiates you from the church goers. Praise God. Your attitude, your speech, your behavior distinguish you from the worldly people and from those that have been saved. As we all know, it's not everyone that goes to church is being saved already. Praise God. It's not everyone that said, I am a child of God, is really saved. It is God that knows who is saved among us. But let your character, let your attitude, let your dressing declare the goodness of God. Let the way you dress or talk to people show the real Christ in you. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And the last one said, our last outline about what is the character needed for evangelism. I said before, first one is love. Second one is faith. Third one is prayerfulness. And the fourth one is speech and confession. The fifth one, dressing. And the last one said, others include temperament, purity. Praise God. Temperament. And I suppose that whatever, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. Praise God. Whoever that is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who has a whole hostile temper is not failing because ash word share up anger. A hot temper man stand up strife, but he who is slow to anger quench confusion, contamination, distraction, and destruction. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want to be a successful evangelist, you must know the hot temper. Because believe it or leave it, whoever you are going there to talk with, talk to, share the good news with, you don't know if the devil has used that person as a trap to take away your glory, to take away your, the glory of God from you. Anger causes destruction. Praise God. Why did Moses did not enter the family stand? It's because of anger. So as a child of God, we must do away with anger so that we will be able to be efficient in evangelism. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. You cannot say you are going to preach or spread the good news and somebody just tell you, ah, look at you. Look at the way you are looking. Or it might just be such to say, I, I don't you carry a Bible because you don't even know uh, where to fall to or whatever. Somebody has told me once that we choose Christianity because it's an easy path to trade off. Say, I you are, you are very looking at it because why? This is how Christianity is. You must be dirty for someone to know you are, you are a Christian. Praise God. That was what somebody told me. He said, eh, I choose to be a Christian because I don't have a way to be beautiful. That Christianity brings ugliness to mankind. That is why I don't have money to be beautiful. That is why I choose to be a Christian. Praise God. So, so I want to meet some people that will provoke you. You are about to meet people that will tell you you don't even know what you are doing. That will insult you to your face. Praise God. But if you are not meek in heart, if you are not slow to get angry, if you are hot tempered, you will begin to fight, you will begin to destroy things. Do you not say, ah, people you are, you are already sustained or convinced to come close to God. Your anger is not telling them, if you go and join them, this is the attributes. He is the carrying you will purchase. Praise Master Jesus. So it is very important for us to be kind in heart, to be slow to anger. Praise Master Jesus. Let somebody open the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 14. Verse 29. Amen. You see what the Bible is telling us there. It said if if we are in hurry to retaliate, I forget the other one from the house, the new translation said, he that is rushed to retaliate, he that is rushed to get angry to whatever, he said he cannot make ever. Please, I will let someone to open the book of Proverbs 15, 
besok we must not be temperamental we must not be harsh in the spirit Proverbs 15 verse 1 Amen. These are the qualities that God wants to see in us. Gentleness. God wants us to be meek. We must not be all tempered. He said, we must not be hot. Guys, don't let your spirit be fought in anger. Or the only thing you will gain from it is destruction. Praise God. Amen. When you are hot tempered, you don't see reasons in anybody. When you are hot tempered, you don't see anything positive, whatever anybody will say. With anger, you can destroy everything you have built in a second. If we want to be a successful evangelist, we must put away what in our heart. We must put away ashness. James 1.20 For the word of man but get not the righteousness of God. The anger of man does not purchase the quality of God. When you are filled with anger, you can never do the will of the kingdom. You can never stand in the gap for anybody. The Bible says you should intercede. But when you are hot tempered, person, you must see a reason that you will not pray for that man. You must see a reason that you will not pray for that woman. You must see a reason that you will not talk to this person. And the way you look, ah, you look bad. And you may not be even you that was looking at. Because you have that anger in you already. Anything that transpires will be me, 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 me. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must be meek in the spirit. And the next one said purity. Men, many as a child of God, you must be free from all evil. Many children of God, their heart is too dark to do good. But they say that Christians, they are believers, they are even a title holders, but their heart is dark. There is no place in their heart. There is no mercy in their heart. But the Bible said no. As a child of God, we must be free, not even on men and all already. No, so we must be free from all evil. We must not have evil thoughts. Let our heart be pure. Purity helps us to be developed in the ways of God. When you purify yourself, it will help you as a child of God. It will develop you in faith. It will strengthen you in all ways. Praise God. Hallelujah. When your heart is at peace, you will always have love to everybody. You will always love the things of God. It gives us self control and respect to one another. Purity. Purity helps us to control us, to control our temper, to control our behavior. It controls us. It helps us to build that faith in us. Purity keeps us away from malice. This is the only way we can eat. We can be effic efficiently in evangelism. Purification keeps us away from malice. And without malice, we cannot be efficient in evangelism. Let's open the Bible to the book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. Please, I want somebody that have the other version, the new translation Bible, to read it for us. But I forget you love my, my, my phone. 
follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of the pure hearts. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do we have another version? Because we need to know, understand this thing very well. Purity is very important. It pays me that I forget that Bible and that for us. Praise God. So when your heart is pure, love will come out from you. Faith will be grown day in and day out from you. The grace to do God good will will be seen in you. Praise Master Jesus. Say those that are pure in heart is gentle in the spirit. And they are wise as serpent. Praise Master Jesus. Purity is a grace that we need all of us that call ourselves a child of God. We need to possess that attitude. Because when your heart is pure, when you are pure in the heart, no matter what people will do, you will not find you will not be offended. Praise God. When your heart is at peace, even when people are insulting to your face, you will be looking at them like they are mad people. It will be funny to you because your heart is pure. Praise Master Jesus. Conclusion. So we must begin to live our lives in a manner that those who see us will want to give their life to Christ. Don't be an object of discouragement to others who are yet to give their life to Christ. Amen. Amen. Say, so let our life be an example that people will see the want to come close to God. Don't let your life be an a child that people will see and say, ah, if this one is a child of God, then I'm better off in the world. Praise God. We still have up to seven minutes. Praise God. Do we have any contribution or question? Amen. Praise God. No, the Bible did not say we should be dirty. Serving God does not make you, does not turn your personality to become inwardness by the use that language. You must look good. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a God of holiness. He loves clean things. Praise God. Our God is not a dirty God. Those that are wearing at him, what is holy things? Maybe they are still living in the world. Praise God. Or they are doctrine. Praise God that Jesus. There's the a ministry that was once saying that they can't say, they are women not to wear trousers. They don't fish with them. They don't use attachment to place their hair. They don't wear their ring and all those things. It's their doctrine. Praise God. But they are men. And they will wear a shogo shogo. It is only the women that must be scared that will be swimming the, the ground. They will, not, they will be not kept, but they are made, they will be waste. So those things are just the, the distraction from men. Praise God. That is not what the Bible says. That is not what the Lord said. He said we should dress good. But let that which we are putting on proclaim Christ. 
He did not say because you are not getting suits, you are not of Christ. No, what he said, don't say you are going to do his will. You are half naked. Praise God. Your dressing is supposed to encourage that person. Now that is not seducing the person. That is what the Bible is talking about. That your dressing must glorify it. Some people they will say they love their way for the when they sit down, they will be saying their other ways. They will say their parts. If I must use it, their part. Praise God. That is what the Bible is against. Do wearing trousers or wearing skirt or tying it apart does not change the grace of God in you. But more than what is saying, don't let your dress be seducing the people you are supposed to convert. Don't let your dressing corrupt the eyes that is seeing you. Praise God for Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. 